Today we're going to make a uh, corned beef in the slow cooker. It's only a few ingredients. It's very simple, but it comes out delicious. I'm going to rub brown sugar on both sides of the meat and the meat with the fat side is going to be up. So let me coat this with brown sugar. As you can see, um, both sides are covered with the brown sugar. The fat side is up. The packet of seasoning that they get, I'm going to sprinkle that over the corned beef. If yours didn't come with a packet, don't freak out too much. It's not hard to do. It's just basically peppercorns and coriander. I mean, you can Google it to see what you could put into it. After that, I'm going to add a can of beer. This is a uh, IPA, but you can use any beer that you like. I just grabbed one of my husband's beers. Um, you can use Guinness. Um, you can use a pale ale. I've used many different things. I basically just use whatever beer we have on hand. So you'll um, open that and you're going to pour the beer around the corned beef in the slow cooker. Then I'm going to add a 32 ounce box of low sodium beef broth. Again, pour it around the corned beef. Eventually the liquid will come up and start to cover the corned beef. And as you can tell, the corned beef is not covered entirely, so I will um, add in some water and do the remaining liquid with water to bring that up to cover that corned beef. I'm just getting the water now. So probably about 32 ounces of water. I'm going to add um, two bay leaves and cover. And I am going to cook this on high for five to six hours. I actually added three bay leaves because my bay leaves were little, but just make sure you remember how many bay leaves you put into something because you can't eat them and you have to remove them prior to serving. So I have three in and uh, when this is finished, I'll make sure that I sp spoon out three bay leaves. Set this on high, five to six hours. Um, and then we'll come back and we will add in the potatoes and the cabbage. Now what you want to do is you want to peel and cube up um, a good amount of potatoes so that you can add into the crock pot to continue cooking. As you can see, the potatoes have been peeled and I'm going to quarter each potato but as you can tell, some potatoes are smaller than others. So when I cut these potatoes, I'm ultimately looking to get them to be a similar size. Um, cut each in half and then half again. And then what I'm going to look is to have consistency and cut all my potatoes the same size. Okay. 
all the potatoes have been um, cut into fairly even sizes and I'm going to add this to my um, slow cooker. Corned beef has been cooking five hours at this point on high and I am going to add in those cut potatoes just slowly because you don't want that to splash back at you. Now, I do want to show you that I can pierce the corned beef with my fork easily so it's, it's um, tender. It's getting more tender. I'm going to keep it in to cook while I cook those potatoes, but if your <clears throat> corned beef, excuse me, is um, completely cooked the way you want it, as tender as you want it, then you would take it out and cook the potatoes by themselves. What you do have to keep in mind with the slow cooker, my slow cooker gives me the option to saute. So I'm gonna turn up that temperature um, if your slow cooker doesn't, then you might want to add these potatoes sooner to give them a better chance to cook, or you might just want to boil the potatoes in a sock pot. And that's perfectly fine to boil, boil them separately. Same for the corned beef that we're going to um, do next. Okay, so all these potatoes are added. I'm gonna give them a bit of a stir and then I'm going to cover this back up and let this cook. Um, I'm gonna check on the potatoes in about a half an hour or so, pierce them with my fork to see how they are coming along because basically we want to be able to easily pierce the potato to make sure that it's soft and cooked enough. Okay, so as you can see, I can easily pierce this meat. It's nice and done. And if you watch, I can pierce through the potato. Actually, I broke the potato in half. So those are cooked. Now what I'm going to do is remove the um, corned beef and I'm going to um, place it on a plate and I'm gonna wrap it with aluminum foil and let it sit for uh, approximately 15 minutes so that the meat can rest and it retains the juices. Then during that time I'm going to take a large cabbage and quarter it into sections so that we can cook that next. Okay so this is the last step. Um, I have a large cabbage as you can see it's um, it's very big. So what I'm going to do is I will cut this um, either in four or six. It depends on um, how it goes. I usually cut the cabbage in four, but um, this is so big, so it might be in six sections. When I cut, I'm going to start um, at the base of it. Now I want to make sure that I don't cut this off. I want to keep it because this core will keep the um, cabbage together while it's cooking. Uh, so you don't want to take out that core. You wanna keep it in. And then right before you eat, you'll cut off that section of the core that's left on the cabbage. Now I can't, um, I can't film and cut at the same time. So I'm gonna uh, put the camera, um, put it, Put the uh, camera down and I'm going to um, show you the end result in a minute. As you can see the uh, cabbage has been sliced. I got about uh, seven slices. <laughs> Some are thicker than others. This one is thinner. Um, sometimes I have a hard time cutting through the cabbage. Anyway, however many pieces of cabbage you have, um, this was a very large cabbage, but I love cabbage, um, so I'm going for it. I'm probably gonna have two pieces <laughs> with dinner. And um, what I did is I took out the corned beef 
and I um, wrapped it with aluminum foil and I took out the potatoes. So now I'm going to place the cabbage in the slow cooker in what's left of the broth and if I need to, I'm going to add water. Okay, here's my meat wrapped with the aluminum foil. Uh, let it, I'm letting it rest and um, these are the potatoes that I pulled out. I put them into um, a, uh, a plastic container because this is so much for two people. We're going to have um, dinner tonight and I'm going to have plenty for leftovers tomorrow. Now here is my slow cooker. Uh, that's as much liquid as I have left. So I'm going to place in my cabbage. Be careful because that liquid in there is hot. So try, try not to get your fingers on it. And whatever fits in, I'm going to um, put in and cook. I might have to cook it in two batches, it looks like. But um, I'm going to add some water so that I at least cover the cabbage. And I'm going to let this cook. And the same thing I do with the potatoes, I'm going to come back and I'm going to um, pierce my cabbage with the fork to make sure that it is, um, has softened enough. The reason why I cook it in the broth that um, we cook the corned beef and the potatoes in is because it gives it great flavor. But sometimes at this point, I've run out of liquid. Uh, it just cooks down. So then I just will keep adding water and that's perfectly okay. If all my liquid had cooked down, I would have just um, added and cooked it all in water and it still would be delicious. Okay. Um, I'm testing the cabbage and as you can see I can get my fork through it. I don't want it too soft because I don't want it mushy but I want it cooked. So you'll get a feel for what's right for you, how you like, how soft you like a cabbage but this is perfect. Now what I'll do is I'll remove this cabbage and um, I'm going to cut out this core section um, before I eat it. This meat has rested and the first thing that I'll do before slicing it is remove all the fat from the bottom and then we're going to slice it against the grain. Here's your final result. Corned beef, cabbage with potatoes. Hope you enjoy. See you next time.